Hello everyone and welcome back to another MRC chess game from the chess history. And in this chess game we have another MRC game by Rashid Nejmetdinov, the fierce attacker, and his opponent is Yakov Esterin. He was actually the world correspondence chess champion and I have a very nice picture to show you. And this is the picture of Bobby Fischer playing a blitz chess game against Tigran Petrosian. And Yakov Esterin is actually on the left edge of the picture. Uh, that's Yakov Esterin standing next to Bobby Fischer overlooking the chess game along with the crowd. So they are trying to see how this young kid Bobby Fischer is going to do against Tigran Petrosian in a blitz chess game. A very nice picture from the good times, from the good old times. A rare and a not very well known picture of Bobby Fischer when he was young. So in this picture we can also see Yakov Esterin. He, he was the world correspondence chess champion, a pretty tough chess player. Okay, so uh, let's check out this chess game. This game uh, happened in 1951. An exciting notable chess game, so let's see what happened. Nejmetdinov starts the game with e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6. And we have bishop to b5, and this is the Spanish game. a6, bishop goes back. Only for the records, if bishop takes knight, capturing away from the center is the best move. Then knight takes on e5. And if knight takes on e5, actually this is a losing move because of queen to d4. And after capturing away from the center, liberating the bishop as you can see so black has a very good position after defending the knight capturing the pawn exchanging the queens and we can say that black won the opening battle so let's take it back okay in this position of course not capturing the knight Nejmetdinov retreats the bishop knight to f6 castling b5 bishop goes back d6 and c3 bishop to e7 well, in this position, capturing the pawn is not working because of bishop to d5, and this is winning a piece, forking two knights, and that would be a blunder. So, developing the bishop, rook to e1, castling, h3, not allowing bishop to g4, bishop to e6, d4 by Nejmetdinov. And Nejmetdinov is planning to push the pawn and forking two pieces. So bishop takes on b3, queen takes on b3, queen to d7, developing the knight, knight from b to d2. So you can see that Nejmetdinov's knight on b1 is looking passive right now, but Nejmetdinov is actually planning his knight to place on f5. And knight on f5 is going to be a valuable asset when attacking the black king. So that's the plan of Nejmetdinov, from knight to b1 to knight to f5. So he is planning to play knight to d2, knight to f1, knight to g3, and then knight to f5, and that's the plan of Nejmetdinov. So let's see what happened. Knight from b to d2, rook over, knight back, e takes on d4, attacking the queen, queen over, attacking the knight, defending, and finally knight to g3, only one move left for placing his knight on f5. So we have c5, kicking the knight back, knight goes back, bishop to b2, and the bishop and the queen is targeting the king, b4, queen back, a5, capturing the pawn, exchanging the pawns, and not exchanging the queens. Nejmetdinov doesn't want any calm, peaceful endgames, so he played queen to g5. And in this position, he can also bring his knight and threaten checkmate, and this is looking dangerous, so... Uh, black push the pawn, kicking the queen back. C4, and Esterin wants to squeeze Nejmetdinov from the queen side, not allowing that, activating the bishop and attacking the knight. Defending the knight with the rook, and it happened. Knight to f5 by Nejmetdinov. As we talked before, knight from b1 to knight to f5. So in this position, I believe there are also some threats such as knight takes on h6, that's check, capturing the knight, capturing the knight with the bishop, bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop, and white is better, maybe. 
So in this position defending the knight. So there is no capturing the pawn with check. And it is white to move. And in this position Nejmet Dino played a very interesting move. Which look like he doesn't have any creative ideas. He doesn't have any ideas. So he simply captured the knight with the bishop. Bishop takes on b6. Giving up the bishop. Why did Nejmet Dino give up his good bishop for the bad knight? Rook takes on b6. It looked like seriously Nejmet Dinov doesn't have any ideas in this position, so he is trying to simplify the game and hoping for the best. But in this position, actually, after bishop takes on b6, if queen takes bishop, then queen to g3 and how to defend the checkmate threat. If bishop goes back, then capturing the pawn check. If pushing the pawn, again capturing. The h pawn that's check. So knight to h5 is not working because of queen to e5. The bishop is pinned if you move the bishop, capturing the rook. So defending the bishop, knight takes bishop check, but this time this is losing the knight and the chess game. Interesting, isn't it? So okay, in this position we have bishop takes on b6, but capturing back with the rook. So giving up his good bishop for the bad knight. But what would you do in this position? Well, Nejmet Dinov sacrificed his knight. Knight takes on g7, forking the queen and the rook. What a move. As you know, Nejmet Dinov is also known as no reverse gear, no reverse gear Rashid. So he is moving forward. King takes on g7 and then knight to d4, attacking the queen, so you know the reason much, much, and much better why Nejmet Dinov give up his bishop for the bad looking knight. Now he has the, he has his knight on d4, making space for the knight with capturing the knight with the bishop, and the knight can jump on f5, attacking the queen, and if something like queen to d6, then knight check, knight to f5 check, forking the king, and the queen. So, where is the queen going? Uh, we have queen to c8, checking the king, and we have king to g8. But in this position, if something like king to h7, this is getting checkmated. If king to f8, still getting checkmated, there is no defense. And if king to h8, only for fun, again, black is getting checkmated. There is no sensible defense. So black is defending the queen and then checking the king, king to g8. This looks like the most safe spot, but then Nejmet Dinov checks the king, queen to g3, check. And we have blocking with the knight, what else? If moving the king, of course, queen to g7, checkmate, and then capturing the knight and black resigned. Why not blocking? Well, black simply resigned. If blocking with the rook, what would you do in this position? Why this move is not working? Again, in this position, if moving the king, queen to g7, checkmate. So blocking with the rook or with the bishop. What would you do in this position if you had the white pieces? So let me give you 5 seconds to pause the video. If you need, you don't have to pause, of course. If you don't need, <laughs> you can just sit back, relax and enjoy the next move of fight. But can you see the move? Maybe you see it. Well, the move is knight takes on e7, forking the king and the queen. So in this position, black has to, well, if moving the king, capturing the queen. So rook takes on e7 is not working because of queen takes on c8 deflecting the rook and capturing the queen and if moving the king then simply capturing the queen and white is a piece and the rook up this is all over for black so after queen takes on g4 if blocking with the bishop what happens then is it pushing the pawn so winning a piece the bishop is pinned maybe pushing the h pawn or the f pawn Can you see the move? Well, that's still knight to e7, check, forking the king and the queen. So 
if not capturing the knight, then capturing the queen with knight. So capturing the queen back. Queen takes on c8. And this is all over for black. Another fantastic instructive chess game by Rashid Nejmetdinov. An attacking masterpiece. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you next time with more beautiful chess games, instructive chess games from the history of chess. So thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and bye-bye.